Hi folks, welcome back to a new episode of Chucks of Cooking. Or if you're brand new, welcome for the first time. And back here over my left hand shoulder, you'll see Betty Lou. And today we are, for the first time of my channel, we are going to be smoking a brisket. And not only are we going to be smoking a brisket, we are going to be doing something a little experimental here with it. I am going to attempt to use Harry Sue's version of a hot and fast smoke meaning that we want to take this temperature up and we want to finish this brisket in about five to six hours, where normally it might take anywhere from 12 to 14, 16 hours sometimes on a brisket. And we are going to do this by kicking the temperature up in the smoker. So I've got the fire going, and next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go inside here and we are gonna prep the brisket for the smoker, and we will get to work here, so follow along. folks so what I've got here is a 12.8 pound brisket that was on sale and I got really lucky because typically it's hard for us to find a prime brisket around here but that's what I did find so I've got my nice uh, boning knife here get this thing opened up and now we're going to discard all the juice that's in the bottom of this package here. It is not what, something that you want to keep for anything. So we're going to try to keep it all in the wrapper. All that we can. If I can get it to let go. There we go. Just like that. We're gonna take this and get rid of it and keep our brisket, obviously. Now, and this is what I consider the top side or the outside, typically the fatty side, usually. And then there's the bottom side doesn't look like we've got a whole lot of cleaning up to do on the bottom here. I'm going to run my... First of all, I'm going to clean up some of this moisture that's laying around here. Get it gone. Now, in my research, I have found that a wooden cutting board is actually more healthy than is a nylon or plastic. So that's the reason why I'm using my wood surface here. I'm gonna go ahead and run my knife over my steel a couple times. Like so. Now, we're going to begin trimming this fat. If I get a little nick into the meat, as long as I don't go too far in, we're all right. One of the unfortunate things about a brisket is how much you trim off of it. Now, and this is not a trimming video, so I'm just going to go at it here and put you on the speed boost. But the silver skin on brisket is nothing like the silver skin on ribs. So there we go. We've got our fat removed pretty well. Take another look at the other side just to make sure there's nothing there. Now I'm this here 
is what's known as the flat. And then there's a fat line that runs right through there on both sides. And what's below that is called our point. And it's typically the flat is more lean and the point is more fatty. And some people like whichever one they like. I mean, now I'm going to cut the corner off here. And the reason why I did that, that's going to allow me to know when I go to slice it, which direction my grain runs. And we want to slice it against the grain, perpendicular to the grain. So that's the reason why I've done that. Okay, so I've moved my brisket into a pan here. And I'm going to start with what I call the bottom first. And we are going to coat this baby with some mustard. Yes, we are. And mustard is just going to be a binder for our spice in a moment. It's not going to add much, if any, flavor to the brisket itself. Now, I'm going to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise I will not divulge the secret of Chuck's secret brisket rub. Now, this is a salt-based rub not sugar especially with the heat that we're going to be put trying to put on this brisket here shortly we do not want the sugar because it could scorch on there and give us all kinds of flavors we're not looking for and a large cut of meat like a brisket or a pork butt it can handle the salt if you use this on ribs or chicken you want to go much more sparingly on it or you will overpower it with salt. Ask me how I know. All right, so there's our brisket. I'm going to stick this back in the refrigerator for a few minutes. Oh, by the way, while I'm here, I want to go ahead and discuss it with you. A smoke ring. A smoke ring on a brisket or ribs or on a pork butt or anything that you go to smoking is a beautiful thing. However, it does not indicate that you did a good or a bad job of smoking your piece of meat. A smoke ring is caused typically by the temperature difference between your piece of meat, the colder the meat, and the temperature difference between your smoker is what creates your smoke ring. And so take that for what it is. It's beautiful, but that does not mean that your meat is, is or is not smoked or that you have done a good or a bad job of smoking your piece of meat. So, what I want to do, I need to get my temperature up in that smoker yet. Currently I'm about 275, which, be, be, which would be great if I was doing a traditional smoke on this brisket. But I need to bump it up. I need to get it kicked up here. All right, folks, so we have indeed hit our 400 degrees here. So now it's time to get this brisket put on. Okay, probably gonna hear some steaming going. There we go. It is on. Now, in every 15 minutes, I have to turn this bad boy. Sorry. One of the downfalls of being both the cook and the cameraman. Can't always see everything. But there we go. We're on. And I'm gonna have to turn this every 15 minutes. All right, folks, so it's been 15 minutes now. I'm gonna burn up some gloves today, I think. All right, talk about heat. Just like that. Gave it a 90 degree turn. Woo wee. That is some heat, let me tell you. All right, folks, well right now I'm holding about 375, 374 right there. It's coming back up actually. But it is time to turn this brisket again. And I think I'm gonna have to get a little bit hotter fire going because uh, 15 minutes is just not giving this thing enough time to uh, recover. Hey, God, it's hot. Woo wee, I hope you saw that. Yep. That even burns my ears and I stick my head in under there. All right, folks, so I'm starting to slowly bring my temperature up. 
And I've found that it appears that putting uh, smaller splits onto the fire is the way to go to bring the temperature up here. Let me get my gloves on. I guess if you think about the smaller splits idea, that only makes sense. So we've been on about 45 minutes now. All right. Whew, that's some serious heat crawling in up underneath there like that. I hope you're seeing this. I think so. Now it's about time for me to get a spritz bottle ready. I'm just going to be using water on this one. Well, I guess I got my fire temperature to come up, didn't I? Kind of looks that way. I was just looking on the uh, radar and uh, we got thunderstorms popping. They're headed our way. That's not going to help. If I have to, if I can get it to the point of pulling the brisket, get the smoke on it, I can uh, take it to the oven to finish. Okay, so it has now been one hour in here and our brisket is puffing up, which is supposed to do. Get my glove on here. I was fooling with the camera. There we go. Now then, I got my spritz bottle here. Give it a good spray down. Keep some moisture on it so it doesn't dry out too badly. Like that. All right. And we are going to be back in another 15 minutes. All right, folks, since my last turn, I've been holding about 415. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the operation of a offset smoker, I'll explain that to you here in just a moment. But right now it's time to uh, get back in here, give it a turn, and another spritz. Okay. So, there we go. Another 90 degree turn. Get my spritz bottle. Ooh -wee. Talk about the heat. We're beginning to get a nice looking color and bark to that. Very difficult to keep my head in this. This would be much better, easier I should say, with a Weber Smoky Mountain or something like that where I could take the top clear off and not have to put my head in there. All right, folks, so for those of you who are unfamiliar with my smoker, this is the firebox. This is where all the, the heat comes from. And in fact, I'm going to throw another stick on here, maybe even two. I know we're hot, but we need to keep our coals going. So this is the firebox. This is what's known as an offset smoker. Okay, so the firebox I just showed you sits right there. I'm knocking my focus out when I stick my finger up there. It's this over here to the left. Now then, over here is the cook chamber. Sizable as it is, I built this myself. And if you go back looking for the great smoker build, you can find it. And so there is an opening between this firebox that I cut right here. And then there are plates. The first one is welded in here and comes to about here. Then there are two movable plates here where I can kind of adjust where the smoke, <coughs> excuse me, and the heat come up through. So there's an opening here, there's an opening here, and then there's an opening down at the end. And I can adjust where that heat comes up and out. Now, and I have a video also back a ways on maintaining a uh, fire maintenance, I believe it is. I'll put that co a link to that up in the top right hand corner and regarding to a offset stick burner. Now you're not going to, as you'll see in that video, you're not going to be able to keep one solid temperature. And as I just explained to you, that's because as you put wood on 
and, and as it burns down, it fluctuates the temperature up and down. So you're kind of looking for a average or a mean temperature of where you want to keep it. All right, so we will be back in a few minutes. Get my camera set back up on my stand there where I walk around at, which is where this is where my camera sits when I'm showing you what's going on way up here under the top hatch. So we'll be back in a few minutes. One thing I forgot to mention back here is the stack where the smoke, most of it goes out. Some of it obviously escapes through my hatch here and I'm not too worried about that. I know if, uh, if I was in a bragging contest, people would be on me about that, but I'm not and the, and the meat doesn't know that I'm leaking smoke around the hatch. Okay, so <laughs> there you go. We will be back in a few minutes. It is time for another turn and another spray. Here's our turn. If I can put my bottle in the same place every time. Oh yeah, starting to get a nice looking bark going on this. All right, folks, it's time for another spin for the win here. Oh, we're looking pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. Smells good too. All right, folks, so here's what's gonna happen. I am at two hours on the hot and fast here at around 400 degrees. I'm gonna try to go another 15 minutes with it before I wrap it. All right, folks, so while it's only been about five minutes or so since my last update, I'm hearing my first peals of thunder and I wanna get this in. So there's our brisket. Looking very nice. I got some beef broth here. I'll go ahead and put some beef broth in here. Oh. Oh. Now, I did not inject this brisket with anything. You could if you wish. I'm not a big fan of injecting for home use. I guess for competition, that's the way to go. I'm going to get this all wrapped up real good. I don't know if you can hear that. But that was definitely thunder. Now and from this point, it is the goal to keep the smoker at 350 degrees. My past experience is that once it starts raining, it's gonna be a lot harder to keep my smoker temperature at temperature. Okay, so there we are. So we're gonna go back to the smoker now and I wanna keep it at 350. All right, folks, so here's where we're at. The um, rain has started and um, Currently, we are running, and I can use my digital thermometer here that I've been using all day. And currently, we are running 314 degrees, 17 degrees. I just stoked some wood onto it. And we are running 153 degrees on the brisket. I did just, after I wrapped it, I did go ahead and put the probe in it. We don't have to turn it anymore. And we need to go to 185 before we begin to doing probe tests on tenderness. So we've got a ways to go. Now I stoked the wood on there knowing that I'm going to run my temperature up. But my experience is that when it starts to rain, it's going to crash my temperature on me. So we'll see where we go here. All right, folks. So it has been quite the ride here. <clears throat> the power went out only briefly long enough to make me reset my computer and the internet and all that good stuff It is now time To get in here and begin to Test this thing to see if we're making any progress as far as tenderness is concerned So our thermometer over there tells us that we're at a hundred and um, ninety nine internal We're still kind of, I think we're still tough 
at least down here on the on the on the flat end it's not where I want to feel it we want to ought to be feeling like we're sliding through butter here I'm gonna leave it for a few more minutes all right folks well I'm kind of at a decision making point here my thermometer says my brisket is at 209 degrees which is a little you know getting on the EPA upper range now that felt really good sliding in there right there sure did kind of like that we're feeling better down here I'm feeling better with it kind of liking it much happier okay so my smoker temperature has come down and so I want to kind of keep this temperature of the right at the brisket here right at this 209 210 area right here so I'm gonna leave it in there for a little bit longer because it is it is definitely tenderized a lot since the last time I probed it I'm liking it a whole lot well we just hit 210 on the brisket and a smoker saying 218. So I think if we just leave it in here for a little bit, I'm gonna leave it. On, I'd like to leave it in here another half hour, and see if we can't hold, maintain this temperature area right here, not go up too much more. 219 on the smoker right now, and we'll go with that. All right, folks. So the temperature of the brisket and the temperature of the smoker have crossed. In other words, my brisket temperature right now is at 206. And my smoker temperature is at 191. So that means we are beginning to cool down. The brisket actually did go up to 210. So it has fallen four degrees. Places down here in the flat that I like. And there are places that I don't know so much. So, what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pull my brisket off. And we're going to take it inside and we're going to let it rest for a while, at least an hour. So, I put my pan in here and it has been well cooked. Get my probes out of the way. Brisket. We're going to take this inside and we're just going to let it rest for a bit. All right, folks, so I unwrapped it and there's our first look. And we're going to let that rest for a good hour. And then we'll come back to it. So I'm just going to kind of wrap it back up a little bit. Smells wonderful. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> All right, folks. So it has been an hour and a half of torture. And um, so now then, I'm going to pull this out of here. And I am tired of smelling it without tasting it. I am going to save this juice. Grab my knife. Now then, here's my edge where I cut it. And so we are going to cut this the same way. This is going to be the flat. Okay. How about that? That looks pretty good. Pull. Oh, passes the pull test nicely. All right. I'm pretty happy. Notice the smoke ring. It's not terribly deep. Definitely there. 
think I'll go ahead and cut myself another one of these. See the smoke ring on there? I like it. All right, folks. I'm going to put that back together just a little bit so it doesn't dry out on me. It's time to turn around and get a taste of this. All right, folks. Well, all together, it has been about five hours and actually six hours, almost six hours on the dot since the smoke, since the brisket went on the smoker. Now, I'm not going to sit and squeeze the moisture out of my brisket or out of my meat. I never do. Mmm. Folks, this has turned out wonderfully. See that? A nice flavor. Not too salty. The smoke might be a little lighter than I would have expected. Mmm. All in all, very nice. Very nice. I'm very satisfied. <laughs> I didn't spend three quarters of a day making it. Harry Sue, salute, my friend. <laughs> I love it. Folks, do me a favor. If you like what you're seeing, down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned. There's always more to come. And thanks for watching.